Hello friends! Today I will show you how to easily draw and paint a whimsical dragonfly in watercolors using a colorful wet and wet background. So let's get started. To start, if you're not comfortable with your drawing skills, you can head over to pixabay.com and use one of their copyright free illustrations or graphics. You can print and trace your design, or even trace right from your computer screen or tablet. I just did a light sketch onto my Canson watercolor paper block for this. You really don't need to use artist quality paper for this. In fact, there is something I really like about this student grade Canson for a project like this. Plus, if you're someone who feels a little intimidated by using expensive materials, then just get out your watercolor journal or an inexpensive block like this, and doing a wet and wet splashy background is a great way to warm up and prime yourself for more creative time. So what I'm doing is wetting my paper, and I do suggest if you aren't using a watercolor block to tape your paper onto your board or a table, since it does need to be pretty wet and your paper will curl and buckle with all the water. I'm using cobalt teal for the first color, and you can see that it's not spreading out evenly, and that is what happens when you use student grade paper or cellulose based paper instead of cotton. You can't really rely on your techniques working as anticipated, but for this type of project, it's not a big deal. Next I'm using my green gold, letting it touch next to the teal, and dropping it into the teal to disperse the paint and create more texture. Now quinacridone violet. This will blend well with the teal, but I want to be sparing when letting it touch the green or it will go too neutral or maybe muddy, and we don't ever really want mud. I'm just adding some more green and teal and carefully adding some violet in that bottom corner. And the last color in this layer is burnt sienna, which is a beautiful earthy color that pairs really nicely with all these colors. And I especially like how it looks against that green gold. At this point, you get to decide how much you want to fiddle with your paint and paper. I'm adding some more color drops and water drops here and there, doing a little tilting of the paper to see if I like the blending, and then just creating more interest while trying not to overwork it. The watery pigment gathered on the edges, so I'm cleaning that up, and now just flicking some water drops for more texture since the paper is still wet. Thank you. 
Now that it's dry, I'm pretty happy with how this layer turned out. I almost couldn't see my original sketch, so if I were to do this again, I would sketch it darker or wait until after applying the paint. I'm using my Micron pen to do the simple outline. You want to make sure that you use something that is waterproof because we have more watercolor layers to use after this step and you don't want it to smear and reactivate that ink. After outlining, I'm going to add the details in the wings, those tiny little cells within those transparent wings. I will just show you part of this process since it was pretty time consuming. For this part, I'm using my smaller micron pen, size 0.1. Now I'm going to add some contrast. So using some dark purple and blue, I'm going to paint around the dragonfly shape. I start with wetting the paper so I can get soft edges from the paint, and I will need to apply it a little quickly. I started with indigo, but decided to mix some phthalo blue for more intense color that went well with the green gold. And on the upper right is where I will put the darker purple, since it is already a purplish color and I don't want to dull the colors by adding the opposite, if that makes sense. Thank you. 
Also make sure you use a brush with a nice point. This one is a black velvet round size 8, but use whatever will help you get in between those tiny little gaps in the wings. Now with the purple, trying to get it on before the paper dries, but I can still soften the edge as I go by adding water. I bring the water all the way to the edge to avoid a hard water line. Thank you again for joining me today. I hope it inspired you to try some wet and wet for your next warm up or watercolor journal entry. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more watercolor tips and tutorial videos. I also read and reply to your comments. And if you comment, then YouTube will suggest my videos to more viewers and it would be a huge help in growing my small channel. So I really appreciate when you guys do leave your feedback and even future video requests, since I only want to provide what's helpful as you are starting or growing your watercolor painting skills. So tell me what you want to see or what you may be stuck on and hopefully I can help. Thanks again and I will see you next time.